Right, good evening. <laughs> so today I'm going to be doing <laughs> this thing, the Vatrig V Minion. It's a bit like a V Core 3, but smaller. Although it's not really anything like a V Core 3. <laughs> but it is from Ratrig, so you know, there's that. Do have to let you know today's live stream is sponsored by Ratrig and kind of by me because of this, which we'll talk about later. But yeah, it is sponsored. There's not gonna be like a overlay promo thing like normal, but I will, because I haven't, I couldn't film like an overlay promo until I've done this unboxing. So yes, that's what you need to know for now. We'll talk about all the specs and stuff a little bit later on. That'll give you some more information. There are voucher codes in the description though, so those will be useful. Uh, if at the time when you're watching, it is out of stock. They're not doing pre-orders for like upcoming stock. So I suggest maybe like writing the code down that you need, like put a post-it on your monitor or something. So you don't forget, there you go. Thank you very much for the $5, Derek. That's very kind. So today is going to be mainly unboxing, take a look at all the parts. We have got the full kit here. So this should be pretty much everything you need. I think other than mains wiring. As far as I know, <laughs> obviously we'll, we'll, we'll get as far as we get and we'll see what we do. So there's not really gonna be much assembly today. There will be a bit of maybe preparation so we can like pre-assemble some things that are useful to do before we start the main stream. But the main live stream for actual assembly will be the next one where we start plowing through uh, assembly. That's generally how assembly works. So yes, welcome back everyone. It's been a little while since I've done a live stream, hasn't it? These things tend to sort of come in <laughs> spurts and then have a big sporadic gap in the middle. Uh, I guess let's just kind of get on with it, shall we? There seems to be 20 less people than there were when the stream started already, so I don't know what happened to those 20 people, but hopefully you're all okay. Oh, Pavel wants to talk about something. Pavel, what is it? <laughs> what have I done? Oh, the colour scheme. <laughs> we'll get there, we'll get there, we'll get there. <laughs> yeah. So this, uh, so the, the whole thing does arrive in two boxes. This is not two printers, by the way. This one over here is electronics and electronics case bundle. And this one is the mechanical kit. So if you presumably just order the mechanical kit, you get this box. If you just order electrical kit, you get this box. I think that's a uh, an option. If you order full kit, you get both. It's not proper colour, all that's <laughs> Unfortunately, as I was setting up the live stream, I did sort of break my top-down camera. I have a 3D printed mount, and it sort of... Uh, can you see? You can't see that, too. But yeah, it snapped as I was rotating it into place, which is kind of annoying. But I have used it quite a lot, so... I guess it's not surprising that these things do break eventually. So I get a business card and build manual. So you get a nice little QR code instruction thing so you know where to go. I have linked in the more info section of the description. Well, in my description, I just type a bit that says more info. It's not like a special section. But anyway, in there, there's a link to the project page where you can find links for like buying it and building it and firmware and electronics guides and all that kind of stuff. Uh, recyclable, good, good, good. Always like to see recyclable stuff where possible in packaging. 
because it is generally single use. It gets used once to ship from one place to another and then disposed of. So the more recycled content, the better. Obviously, cardboard box is good. This is another cardboard box. Paper, 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 and a little bit of bubble wrap and some plastic wrap. That's not too bad at all. Pretty, pretty good. So mechanical parts, frame. These parts look way bigger than I was expecting. Why was I expecting it to be smaller? This looks huge. Huge, huge, huge. If only I knew someone with a 3D printer. Yeah, God, that would be useful, wouldn't it? If, you had, if I had a 3D printer, I could just like print things. Like when I design them and just make them like straight away. What a great idea. Two for seven printing. Welcome. Oh yeah, so the pricing of the full kit that originally that was five four nine and it's gone up to five nine nine. So fifty euros more. But it still seems pretty good value. Obviously, I'm not really this is not any review or anything, this is just sort of unboxing and building stuff. Oh, this but it seems like a reasonable price. I do have a Prusa Mini, I did see that comment. Uh, I'm considering trying to do comparisons. Those comparison videos do take a huge amount of time though, and it just depends what value, because obviously Prusa Mini is a few years old now, uh, so, but it is, a, it is a reasonable comparison between this Prusa Mini and the Voron V0, so it's something I'm considering. Frame looks really well cut, doesn't seem to be sharp. I was hitting it because sometimes you end up with like the cutting material or the waste material left inside the extrusions, which there isn't in this case. They're nicely done actually. They're, they're threaded and chamfered to help with the insertion of the screw. Good job. Ooh, you've had three. Ooh, Nitrans here as well. Lots of people joining us today. Welcome, welcome everyone. Isn't it joy exciting? <laughs> Individually wrapped. It seems excessive, but these, despite being um, relatively sturdy, the anodize on these does tend to damage quite easily if they're rubbing together. So it does make sense they are individually wrapped. Uh, this looks slightly rounder than the normal. I, this, this, so this is the 2020 extrusion for like the X axis. Um, bit of a burr on this one, not major. It just looks slightly different geometry than I'm used to for 2020, but it comes in like the 2020 extrusion is not really a standard size, different places, different countries make slightly different variations. Lead screw packed with the extrusion, that's good because the strength of the extrusion helps stop any bend with the lead screw. <laughs> I really hope that's actually true. <laughs> They painted, not anodized. I'm pretty sure this is anodized. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's anodized, especially when it's aluminium. It's so much, it's easier to anodize, especially in tight spaces, like around the back of the extrusion. If it was painted, you'd probably see areas where it's not um, covered. So extrusion's looking pretty good. Happy with that. Oh, we've got this bit as well. Ah, the rails. Linear rails, super duper important. Let's see what we get. The 
These are some beefy rails. Holy bananas. They're also oily. So we can guess by the amount of oil that's uh, with the rails that these are um, high carbon steel, not stainless steel. That's my prediction because the stainless steel ones tend to come with very little or no lubrication. Whereas the carbon steel ones, because they can rust much more easily, they tend to be coated with plenty of oil. Um, I'm not going to go too much in depth with these today, I'm just going to... So we've got, looks like two MGM-15 rails, so that will be X and Y, and a Z and Y, and then X for the 2020 is an MGM-12 by the looks of it. So plenty of oil, <laughs> even on the outside of the bags. Definitely something you want to uh, be a little bit careful of when you're doing, handling these. Uh, my extruder thingamajig, brute forsyth is not open source. Uh, well, not at the moment. I'm not necessarily planning to either. So those linear rails. Uh, so being high carbon steel, I would probably recommend, see as they are covered with quite thick lubrication. Um, I'll do it when I get to this part of the build to strip them down carefully and just remove some of this thicker oil and use something that's more more greasy to kind of so you can pack them in and lube them properly rather than just have this kind of like corrosion inhibition sort of oil. Technically they'll probably work fine so you wouldn't have to do that if you couldn't for any reason you probably would be okay. After, at the end of the day, an oil is still an oil, but you're probably better off uh, opening them up and cleaning them out and lubricating them with a more sort of, what's the right word? A purpose specific? Application specific lubricate. So the rest of the mechanical kit, again, filled with cardboard, well, paper, not cardboard. Huge baggy of screws and such. So, unfortunately there's not really like paper options for these kind of bags at the moment. So, everything's really well labeled though typed out labels, so pretty easy to read, nice and clear, shouldn't come off. Everything individually. I mean, kind of maybe a little bit over bagged. I mean, there's like bags within bags here. I mean, it's bag within a bag within a bag. So maybe a little bit over bagged, but I mean, they are well organized. And obviously they've got a kind of arrange them at their end as well to be able to package these quickly and efficiently. So it does make sense. We've got the GT2 pulleys, let's get this camera in. So, you've got a few spares or extras pulleys for six mil, nine mil belts. What have we got? So that's six, that's six, that looks like nine and nine. So one axis nine mil, one axis six mil. Feet and nut for the lead screw, some spacers, more nuts. There's just a lots of nuts and screws and brackets. Oh, let's have a look at these. So these are brackets for holding the frame together. I didn't particularly like the ones on the Vehicle 3. Hmm. These ones are maybe a little bit better, or are they the same? The, uh, the paint layer on them looks thinner so this looks more like it's been uh, spray painted whereas the other ones had a quite a thick powder coat so I don't know how durable it is we'll find out as we do some assembly 
They don't look super high quality, but at the end of the day, it's the strength that's the main important thing with these, so. They're the same. They're definitely not the same as the ones I've got. Ah, so the bracket is the same. The bracket does look the same, uh, but the paint process is definitely different. The bracket itself is identical, yeah. And then there's some also rounded ones. So the rounded ones are for the, this is the thicker paint. So if I show you both of these side by side, you'll see the difference in the paint process, even though they're different brackets. Can you see how this one's kind of, you keep those sharp edges, whereas this one is all kind of thick and rounded because the paint is very, very thick. So yeah, it looks like slight change in paint process, whereas this is a different bracket. I think this is for the spool holder. Not sure why they're different. Oh, because these, these are obviously to this way. Like these, obviously these things that stick out determine how you can mount it. So you can't mount these sideways, whereas this one is designed to be able to fit and rotate on either direction. So that's those, that looks good. Got some PTFE tubes there for filament. Nuts and screws and screws and nuts, and then belts. Have we gone full ball with the fancy belts? Gates belts, please. Not labeled as gates belts, unfortunately. I think they're long enough that we would see a logo on there if it was. I've not done any testing to indicate that a Gates belt is significant. This has got some marking on it, but I don't think. No, so it's, it's labeled as a 2GT-9, uh, but it's not a Gates belt. So, so what I was saying was I've not done any testing to show that there is significant difference between these and a Gates belt, but I mean, Gates are the industry standard sort of thing. So it would have been nice to have those. Bit of a cost increase, but a nice option. So we've got a nine mil belt, presumably the nine mils for the, the Y axis because the Y axis has the movement of the bed. Bed obviously being fairly heavy in comparison to the high end. So it makes sense to have the large belt because it means you can have more weight and still go super duper fast. So that's pretty much, I know there's a bit more for the mechanical kit yet. Yeah, hang on, hang on a minute. Final things, so we've got, oh, we've got two more things in here. So it looks like bed and some brackets for the assembling. <laughs> Try and open these without scratching them. So these looked well made before on the big core three. Uh, I'm tending to agree with, well, agree with? Looks like the quality is very similar to the past lot, so that's good. plates there. Again, looks like anodized aluminium. Actually, these look kind of powder coated. They're much rougher. Or maybe just sandblasted. No, because they've got burrs. Don't know, confused, but they do look well made, so I'm not too worried. Nice. I'm going to show you these a little bit closer.
You can see the kind of texture on the Looks good, looks good, looks good. And then finally, the bed. I'm assuming it's the bed. I don't think it could be much else. It's good that the uh, bed's protected by some cardboard or wood in here, just a thin layer, because it means as you're using a knife to open it, it does help protect it. Which board has been decided upon? Uh, well, we'll get to the electronics stuff in a minute. So this is the build plate. Weirdly, the the holes are not gotten that. I mean, they're all all the way through, but the waste material is like still in the tip of the hole. <laughs> Come to me. Yeah, weird. Anyway, so this is how thick? Five? I've lost all my measury things. These calipers are broken. I must have something I can measure it with. There we go. Not an ideal tool, but it'll probably be good enough. Yeah, so five mil. It's a cast aluminium tool plate that's been milled flat. So shouldn't end up too warpy or bendy over time. Pretty much every bed tends to have some bend and warp in it, but there is a inductive probe for leveling, so. I should account for any small deviations. It's not marked, not scratched. Nice uh, chamfered and rounded corners. So you're not gonna cut yourself on it by accident. Looks very good. Good job. So as we don't have like a pre-prepared sponsored segment for today, I'm just gonna run through some of the specs of the machine so you know plenty about it and where you can get it from. So it's of course open source, so you can find all the stuff on GitHub. It's a DIY machine, so as you can see quite obviously, you will need to assemble it yourself. The build volume is 180 millimeters cubed, so not huge, it's designed to be a fairly small printer. If you wanna go larger, probably look for getting a V-Core 3. 
uh, it's designed to be a high performance and middling cost printer. So it's not definitely the cheapest you'll find, but it does have uh, all the components necessary to hopefully enable some pretty fast printing speeds. And there's been some <laughs> quite fast printing I've seen already, so that looks optimistic. As you've already seen, some pretty big extrusions. So there's the extrusion size is 30 by 60 millimeters, which is pretty large extrusion for a, a small 3D printer. So that'll keep everything rigid and allow you to try and obtain those high printing speeds through high acceleration, which requires high force, which requires a rigid frame to not end up wibbly wobbly. Well, we've not seen it yet. There is included a Kinovo heater. So Kinovo obviously pretty well known now for providing good heaters and becoming quite a bit of a industry standard within 3D printing. A lot of DIY uh, printers especially that tend to use these milled tool plate beds pretty much always, or at least very often use Kinovo heaters. So you're in safe hands there. Software wise, um, firmware wise really, uh, all run by Clipper, which of course is sort of helped along, if you like, with Rat OS, which is the, I don't know, it's like a, it's just a super helpful gatherer of all the stuff that you need to be able to uh, enable Clipper on your printer very quickly and easily. So it helps with all the updates and, in, and main installation, configuration, all those sorts of things, much easier with using the kind of pre-configured Rat OS than trying to do the whole thing yourself from scratch, which can be a little bit daunting. In terms of availability and getting one, so at the moment there's options of the mechanical kit and the full kit. They are not doing pre-order stuff, so if there's none in stock, you'll have to wait a little bit before more stock is available. There's a link below for the project page, and there you'll be able to find links for purchasing. And I think I put a purchase link actually like top line in the description, so you can use that as well. And of course we've got voucher codes, so with the voucher code, which is a V3D Minion dash mech for the mechanical kit. Um, and that'll get you 4% uh, off the main price. And that gives me a little kickback as well, as does the code for V3D Minion full, which is for the full kit. Uh, that's V3D Minion dash full. Again, it's linked below, it's linked below. It's in the description below. So you can copy and paste it into the cart at the checkout. Just make sure you actually go to the cart before going straight to checkout. Because if you go straight to checkout, you can't use the code. So go to cart and then you'll be able to add the code there. That should make it much easier. Also, it's sort of sponsored by me. Uh... Okay, I missed a bit from there. Uh, with my divider. So we're calling this, we came up with the name literally an hour ago, uh, the Vector 3D Divider PCB Mod. So this is the test unit, so it, <laughs> it does have some modifications on, so you can kind of ignore the extra wire and stuff in here. But it's basically a PCB, uh, comes as a kit, so you have to assemble it to this state, and it comes with all the connectors and terminals and stuff you need. And it allows you to much more easily disconnect with the wiring from your printer. And it makes it easier if you have an enclosure and stuff like that. You can wire everything up into this. And then it's just one, two big connectors and then your hot end and heated, heated bed connectors. And that's your whole printer connected up then. So this will be for sale on my uh, web store pretty soon. At the moment, there's no link in the description, but it will be there when it's available. And that of course comes uh, with an STL for the enclosure, which will allow you to mount it to the printer. And of course, a jig, because I love jigs. Uh, so there's an assembly jig. And this just helps with the assembly process. So you, you can put all the easy components in and you can just kind of place them in. And then you put all the connectors and stuff in the jig. You place the, well, it would be the empty PCB. You place the empty PCB onto all the connectors and then you solder everything together and it just makes it much easier because nothing all moves around all over the place. So as you can see, that fits in there afterwards. Once you've assembled it, obviously you don't really need that, but there you go. That's what that's going to be. A link below for if you want to get one and I'll obviously be showing as I do my uh, live series here, 
you'll be able to see how to assemble it, how to use it. But there will be, I mean, there already is, full written instruction guide to help you do the whole process, any modification stuff that you need to do. And it's gonna be compatible with the Squirrel Brain uh, drag chains mod. So if you've got that, don't worry about that. There's space, it does fit, it's a slightly modified design. So there you go. Right, now let's get on with the electronics kit. That sponsor segment's over. Uh, let's move these to one side. Uh, I was hoping to have it released today. The design, so uh, we have been, me and a small team have been doing some testing. I obviously, I have only just got my kit, but I have had a small team of testers uh, working on fitting their V minions with my design. And we had a couple of little hiccups, nothing major. So there'll be one final revision of the board which will obviously go to production. I'll get all the parts we need. Hopefully that will maybe be a couple of weeks from today. Uh, so it might go on order maybe sometime in the next week. And then we'll have everything coming in soon after that. And then maybe shipping out then in maybe three or four weeks from now. Somewhere around. Excuse me. <laughs> Somewhere around that. I'll be trying to obviously do it as quick as I can. We, uh, we don't want to delay. But I think that's a fairly realistic time schedule. Uh, oh, by the way, I've got some granite. <laughs> so, because I've obviously assembled a fair few of these extrusion frame things, and normally I do it on a wooden surface, I've had countless people know that I'm assembling it on a wobbly wooden table. It's pretty flat, really, but I decided to get some granite. I wanted to get something that was like 500 by 500 mil, but I also didn't want to spend loads of money getting something just specifically made so I can plonk it on a desk and assemble stuff on it. So I was like, I don't care what color it is, don't really care what size it is, as long as I can lift it. And I was like, okay, this will do. <laughs> I can just about lift it, but it's probably like 50 kilos of granite. It's absolutely enormous. But it should mean that we can assemble printers nice and squarely and flatly and nice. That's not a sponsor thing, by the way. <laughs> That's just why there's this big white slab on the table. Not used it for any actual assembly yet, so hopefully we'll get there soon. Ooh. Right, electronics kit. Smells of cardboard, lovely. <laughs> so in here, again, good start with packaging, recyclable, easy to recycle. Lots and lots of stuff and things. <laughs> it's like Christmas, isn't it? When you open a big box of stuff like this. Where do we start? Let's just start right at the top. We've got some mains wires. I need to shift some of this stuff. Hang on a second. Right. On the red button, what's the red button? I don't understand. <laughs> so electronics case bundle. Got a little bit of mains wiring here. So we've got an earth, live, neutral, red and black. And two little extra lift connectors. Not sure exactly what they're for. Some zip ties. Oh, some nice cable sleeve. Oh, this is the kind of split open. Very nice, that's just what we want. Some screws, presumably for the Ag Electronics case. We've got a GDS time fan. That's presumably for cooling the electronics. IC connector, USB cable, and some crimp terminals for the power cables. That's good, good, good. Hex standoffs for mounting stuff in the case. Hex locking nuts and more screws. 
So yeah, that is all the electronics case. So this, if you don't already know, the Viminion's kind of divided into two parts. You have like the main printer, and then you have the electronics case, which is separate. And I mean, that's kind of the reason for having this. Uh, it enables, so normally the way you'd buy design with the original design is you'd be wiring directly from the printer all the way out, everything together into a separate case. And that's what all this stuff's for. With this, you kind of put it in the middle, so everything on the printer assembles to this, and you can assemble the electronic stuff, the, the whole case separately, and then just plug it into this. So yeah, divide it into two bits, and that's the electronics case. And here we has the things. Thermistor NTC 100K. JST connector, cartridge. This is kind of odd. So this is obviously the hot end thermistor. I mean, it could be for the bed, I suppose, but it's a cartridge. So that's hot end cartridge with solder connections, straight to a wire with two JST connectors on the end. And there's a JST thing in here with some heat shrink and there's also this extra piece of wire. Maybe if your specific control board doesn't use JST and uses something else, it gives you the option. I would try and make sure that when you do your hot end assembly though, that that uh, solder joint is very well constrained. You don't want that to be on part of the moving. I mean, it's very close to the hot end, so you shouldn't have any trouble. But solder can be, well, it does get quite brittle. So you just got to make sure it's supported. Here we have, again, a bit of a mix of wires and stuff, presumably for compatibility. It's mainly just this inductive probe, which I think is slightly different to what my beta testers have had, because theirs didn't have a label on, I don't think, if I recall correctly. But there we go, that's the inductive probe. So the inductive probe, obviously, for bed levelling. That senses the bed surface. Well, sort of, not, doesn't technically measure the surface, but it measures. And then we have a 24 volt, 60 watt heater. Blimey, Charlie. <laughs> no shortage of heating power. That is a lot of heating power. And then we got uh, bootlace ferrules on the other end. Presumably that's long enough to go to the electronics case. Not very long though. And then we have a couple more fans. So these are going to be your hot end and park cooling fans. Both again GDS time. I've not used their fans before. Hopefully they're reasonably good. I think they're recommended in boron bombs. So there you go. Take from that what you will. So 24 volt fans, which is good. You've got a 50 mil blower fan for your park cooling. So plenty of airflow and pressure. Heated bed. So obviously Kinovo looks like in here we have a, this is not stuck in so you can pull it out and have a look. Uh, a 157 Celsius thermal fuse, just tucked into a sleeve. So if your bed does reach that temperature, that fuse will uh, pop, disconnect and disable the bed. So you shouldn't be going to 157 degrees Celsius anyway, so 
it's a good temperature to select. This bit, I don't think I just did that, did I? That could maybe use a slightly larger patch, but I think it's going to be fine. I'm not too worried, really. As long as there's some strain relief at the bed, that's my hope. For the bed wiring, no connectors on the end of these, either of them. Yeah, obviously, we've got the thermistor and the heater for the bed. So this is not a mains power bed, so there's no SSR and stuff like we've had on previous builds. Um, this is directly 24 volts, 180 watts, so it is a fairly high current bed. So you just got to make sure you wire it correctly, because if not, that's quite a lot of current that can <laughs> heat things quite quickly. Uh, print surface here, we've got what looks to be a PI flexible magnetic sheet. Uh, that could be PI on the back, but I don't think it is. I think that's uncoated. It just happens to look kind of gold. So PI textured sheet. I'm assuming PI. It looks PI. Oh, there's so much cool stuff. For the hot end, we have the Dragonfly BMO. Uh, it looks like a copper nozzle. Let's have a look at this. I like this hot end. Back is coated. Okay. Oh, uncoated. That was right. So yeah, it's a rough PEI. For rough coated PEI, it doesn't generally stick too well to PLA. But I've had pretty good experience with like ABS, ABS Plus. ABS Plus actually sticks very well, um, generally. And PETG and stuff like that, I've had pretty good luck with. So by the feel of it, it's a copper block, this hot end. Single heat break. Looks like a bimetallic heat break. Does it have more information on the specifications? What should we do? But we've already had the hot end, uh, the thermistor and heater, so we know where they are. I believe this is on a on the V0 as well, so pretty good hot end. I managed to do some pretty fast prints with it. And then it comes with a nozzle, which is 0.4. And to me, given its color, I'm pretty sure that's going to be a nickel plated copper nozzle. So it tends to conduct a bit better than brass. So in theory, slightly higher flow rates, but it's not massively significant. So yeah, that's the hot end. TMC 2209 stepper drivers. Four stepper drivers. So there's no like dual Z or anything. This being a cantilever design. So as a driver for X, Y, Z and E extruder. TMC 2209 stivers, drivers. They've been quite popular now for a little while, which is good. Quiet, high performance, just what you want. For the extruder, we have a Bontech. What is the Bontech? Uh, LGX Lite, nice. So I did assemble one of these recently and that did go rather well. So good to see another one. Tiny little extruder. Comes with some extra nuts and stuff too. It's very, very small. I'll do a bit of disassembly with this because I'm a bit more familiar with it. So the housing is all 3D printed. I'm not using FDM, but it is 3D printed. Mm -hmm. 
very easy to disassemble. So you've got a stepper motor on the back, LVO motors, 1.8 degree, 36 millimeter pancake motor. And then the whole thing just kind of comes apart super duper quick and easy. I've forgotten how to take this bit out. That's okay. I forgot. This one seems slightly different to what I had. Because my brain just failed. I think that's probably more likely. Well, yes. So you got, so LGX obviously stands for the large gear extruder. So while still a Bontec that's using larger gears than you might have seen previously. All nicely fits together. I thought we might have gone for the LDO Orbiter. Uh, well, this was the this is the standard kit. This is what um, what Rat Rake have provided. So I've not selected any parts here. These are not my preferences. These are the Rat Rake preferences. Which maybe I should have mentioned at the beginning. Because I know people like to base their decisions on what I'm using. So I think it's probably important to share that these were not my decisions. It doesn't mean they're bad decisions, it just means they're not mine. But this seems like a good decision to me based on my experiences using it before. next in our big package of Christmas gifts. <sighs> end stops. So exciting. There are end stops. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have wires for stepper motors. They got this huge PVC sleeve on. These are just standard length wires. I don't think they're going to be cut to size or anything. They might be. They haven't been. They weren't before. So I'm going to assume they're not. I normally take off all the PVC sleeve, it just makes it a bit easier to handle. What's this? Oh, okay, this is enclosure pieces. Let's have a look. Oh, this is falling apart as I touch it. Would I choose? I've not really used Orbiter. I do have one, but I've not used it. So it looks like acrylic or, yeah, this looks like acrylic. Can't smell it. <laughs> Again, looks bigger than how it looked in my head when I saw it, but presumably these sort of fit together in this sort of arrangement and form the box which the electronics and stuff go in. Not amazing. It doesn't look scratched, but it's all the edge is all kind of peeled up and yeah, it looks like a bit okay. It's a bit dirty, but that's not too much of a worry. As long as there's no like major damage, I think we'll be good. I might have preferred matte black over glossy black, but I think we're all right. I think it's PC. Oh, so probably carbolic rather than acrylic. Which polycarbonate is a pretty good decision then uh, because it has a slightly higher temperature rating. Uh, it's just more suitable for higher temperature applications. Acrylic would probably be fine for an external enclosure, but polycarbonate works well too. Polycarbonate is probably a little bit more durable. Acrylic can be quite brittle, but again, it's a static application. so wouldn't be something I'm particularly concerned about. For power supply, we have a WeHo LRS 
350 24 volt. Which has a fan. Hmm. I don't like fans. Less fans is best fans. <laughs> 350 watts, it is quite high power power supply, so it's not necessarily surprising that it has a fan. 14.6 amps output, of course it is. Hopefully that doesn't turn out to be too loud. Time will tell, we'll have a go, see where we get to. Here we have Big Tree Tech. So this is going to be the control board. We've got the SKR2. Oh, hello. Congratulations. The SKR2 you received is STM32F429VGT6 version. Before DIY firmware modification, customers need to build an F429 environment on the compilation platform for compilation and use, instead of directly using the firmware F407 the previous F407 firmware. So presumably due to supply chain issues, they were not able to supply, uh, Big Tree Tech were not able to acquire the same chips. So we've got a slightly different one in here. Hopefully that's not a surprise to RatRig. Or maybe RatOS, Mikhail, he's, I don't, he's still having a bath. I've used quite a few Big Tree Tech boards now. I've been really happy with them. They're, they've become the kind of go-to for especially enthusiast level control boards. So with SKR2, you've obviously got drivers that you place in on top, which is what we unpacked earlier, 22 and nine drivers. We've got a regulator on here, which regulates five volt up to four amps. So you should be able to power uh, Raspberry Pi from this as well. Obviously, clipper based, it's always useful to be able to have fewer things. Decent connectors for power. We've got um, fuses in here as well, which is always good to have just in case. If something goes a little bit haywire, a fuse <laughs> will save your bacon. And that is just a standard O control board. Everything nicely labelled on the back. I hope they put, don't put too much time into label everything on the back because once you mount it in your printer, you can't see diddly squat. <laughs> and I don't think anyone wires it up looking at the back. So maybe it's not that useful after the development stage, but you know, it is what it is. It looks like we might have to be able to add Wi-Fi to this board. These pin arrangement looks like a Looks like it could be possible, but don't quote me on that because I've not checked. That was merely an observation. <laughs> what are those green connectors called? I'm actually not sure. They're called pluggable screw block terminals. It's like the generic name, but the specific name and brand, I don't know. Raspberry Pi. We have a Raspberry Pi, of course, because we have the clippers. <laughs> the clippers. We're running clipper. Ooh, it's like a, not a full size. It's a dinky Raspberry Pi. So it's a Raspberry Pi 3 Model A Plus, oh, we can't zoom in any more than that. Are we going to manage it? Are we going to? Oh, there we go. Let's get it the wrong up. Pretty neat little board. So presumably this has got the same whole pattern, apart from a normal Raspberry Pi is just extended out. I think I've got a 3B pus just laying around, possibly, maybe, perhaps. So we can 
compare. Three B plus. First time. First try. There you go. So I'm not sure exactly what you lose. You lose Ethernet you lose three USB ports. So no option for a wired connection. I mean, I'm sure you could sort something out if that was absolutely what you needed. You can obviously use the GPIO probably. That looks like the LAN chip, which is for presumably the LAN connection. That's a guess. This is, we don't need that. Looks like it should be just fine. Good, 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 good. What's this one? That's another 3B plus. I've got Raspberry Pis coming out my ear holes. Where did I get so many? Four. <laughs> I think they keep arriving with printers and like this. So this is now another one. Right. Not complaining. Definitely not complaining. Cool. So that's your Raspberry Pi. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Perfect job. Hopefully they can keep a decent supply of these because Raspberry Pi prices are shooting through the roof. Motors. Just the USB hub and Ethernet, the rest is the same. Excellent. So that's, you barely lose anything then. And we're keeping everything that you actually really need. I'm not sure many people connect their printers up via a wired connection. I have previously, only for a bit. I much prefer wireless for a printer. Because you don't need the connection all the time, you only need it for uploading and starting prints, really. If it is a little bit intermittent, even, it, it just doesn't really matter. Whereas for things like live streaming, obviously a wired connection, a bit more important. So for the stepper motors, These look all the same, even though they're packaged slightly separately. Yeah, so three identical motors for X, Y, and Z. Obviously the extruder motor comes with the extruder that was in the box with this. It's all attached as part of the assembly. So these are your X, Y, and Z motors. Looks fine. Let's make sure I don't have a problem. Wide better for secured networks. Yep. Sounds plausible. Again, we've got a business card for rat rig and guides. I think. Unfortunately, this one was really kind of in the bottom of the box and on the top, but it doesn't really matter. Get in there. Ooh, look, printed parts. Okie dokie. So many parts. Oh, so this is probably a good time for me to mention while we're looking at printed parts. And uh, we'll do it afterwards. Or maybe I'll do it now because it's gonna to be topical as we look through these parts. So, this kit of parts is obviously from Rat Week. You've seen that, it literally just came out of the box. They print all of the parts as far as I'm aware, every single one out of PETG, uh, which generally is fine. With the vCore 3, I commented about the components very near to the hot end. Could definitely benefit from being printed out of ABS. But largely on the rest of the printer, not too much of a worry. However, I know there are people looking to print them out of ABS just because, A, they like printing ABS. Why not? 
and also they want to be able to enclose it and you know might just benefit a little bit from some additional temperature resistance so i have printed all the parts myself <laughs> and in the process i have also made quite a few little modifications mostly little some are a little bit bigger but mostly little modifications things like just the angles of the chamfers and stuff like that to help you printing them with ABS. ABS can be a little bit more finickety to print with, well, warping and just trying to limit the amount of like steep overhangs or sharp corners and stuff like that. So it's just a design, a set of more optimized parts for printing out of ABS. That's the main focus. And then there are some other little modifications as well. So if you want to get these, obviously you don't have to pay for them. It's all open source. So there's a link below to my GitHub page and you can download them there. That's all. All the same parts, pretty much, just reoriented, so you don't have to worry about the print orientation, it's all sorted for you, and very slightly modified to be easy to print out of ABS. That's all, now you know. So I'll probably compare these with mine as we go a little bit, because reasons, and I'll maybe highlight some of the differences I think I've printed all the parts. There might be some parts I've missed, but we'll see. Oh, and yes, purple. I decided to go purple. Purple. I think purple and black's gonna look pretty cool. So there you go. So these are the uh, enclosure panels for the case. In a very luminous green. I don't know if I still have much green from the original. I think this looks like a slightly lighter green, but I might be, gee, that might just be rubbish. So, mine are basically the same. Very little change on these. Slight modification to like the size of the openings. And I rotated the hex so it was flat on the top rather than pointed. So here you can see on my one at the bottom, is it? the flat is at the top and at the bottom, whereas on this one the point is at the top and the bottom. And that steep overhang I think could be quite difficult with ABS. So hopefully this orientation will help that a little bit. Fingers crossed. The rest of these parts are just like little feet and cable management things, so no big dealio there. Print quality looks reasonable though. It's all to be seen. Mm, these have been printed in a really bizarre orientation. Why would you print it that way up? I think these might have been printed in the wrong orientation. So these little clips are obviously for zip ties. I think they're meant to be printed this way up, like that. But these ones have all been printed that way up, like that. So it's all a little bit loose on the inside. It seems an odd way to, uh, to print that in my mind. So I'm not sure why it's that way up. But then, oh, there you go. And then we've got some feet. Again, my design is basically the same, just slightly adjusted overhang angles. So you don't have to worry about it so much with with the old ABS. But we should do our other little sponsor segment quickly. I don't know what to do. I just do talk about the same as before. This is the problem with not having a pre-recorded sponsor segment thing. So, Seeing as this stream is sponsored by RatRig and kind of by my little PCB design, well, I'm just going to recap some of the specifications so you know what's going on and where you can get hold of one. So of course it's open source design. So if you want to check the CAD or modify some parts and make some modifications yourself, you can do that all pretty easily. You've got a 180 millimeter cube build volume. So 180 by 180 by 180. Not a huge printer, but aimed at being a high performance and reasonable cost machine. 
So you can print like super duper quickly, if that's what you want to do, or also super precisely. But you can do those things in many other ways often, but there you go. It's designed to be a high performance machine. The extrusion frame also kind of supports that mentality by having a big like 30 by 60 frame section, which is pretty large for such a small machine. And that help it just be really rigid and print really well. All the assembly guides and stuff are online, so no need to print anything out or stuff like that. And they can be updated and there's comments and stuff on there, so that'll help you through the assembly process. And of course, you'll have this video too. All the electronics is Clipper based, and then you've got Rat OS, which is just a really good integrated system for getting everything set up and configured without all the kind of difficult and challenging parts that come along with doing Clipper things. So that's a really useful system and I'd highly encourage you to use that rather than trying to do it yourself. In terms of getting one of these for your own, uh, there's a link in the description, top line there, which will, well, it's basically the shop link. And then there's two voucher codes for Vector3D, uh, one for the mechanical kit, the one for the, the mechanical kit and one for the full kit. So the V3D Minion dash mech will get you 4% off the mechanical kit and V3D Minion dash four will get you, oh, sorry, I've been quoted them as percentage. They're not percentages. It's eight euros and 12 euros. It sort of doesn't matter, but for clarity, it's eight euros and 12 euros. That's all in the description. It's on the code so you can see which each one is. Uh, so there you go. So that's the, the Minion, which we're unboxing and looking at. And then the other thing that's sort of sponsored by me is my PCB mod. So this is going to be the, the Vector3D, oh, I've forgotten the name of it, <laughs> literally just named it an hour before the stream and I keep forgetting the name. The divider? Yeah. So this fits in this enclosure this way around. So this is just a PCB design that will help you with the assembly and any detachment or removing the electronics case. So it helps with things like enclosures or if you move the printer around and stuff like that. So you assemble your printer and you plug it all into all these connectors down here and these ones at the side. And then these ones go out to the electronics box. So you've just got one, two and the heater connectors and that's all you need to disconnect if you want to just remove the whole electronics box. So that will help with maintenance because you've only got to go to here and not undo all the whole like umbilical. And yeah, it's just a nice, neat and tidy package to keep your printer nice and tidy. Tidy package, that's generally what they do. And then of course it comes with an enclosure and that mounts to the printer. It's compatible with the squirrel brain drag chains, so don't need to worry about the space occupation. And also comes with a full written guide online, as well as this small jig. The design will vary slightly as this is not the final PCB. As you can see, it's still got like a wire on it from where we had to make a little change. But this is basically what happens. It's like the opposite of this. Obviously this is a assembled one going into the jig. But you pull all the connectors in here and it just really, really helps with assembling everything, getting everything the right way around and square and all this kind of stuff. So that's just another part of that PCB design. So that'll be available pretty soon, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Um, we've been doing testing recently of the, the last two weeks-ish and that's coming to sort of a close so as that finishes off I'll be able to get all the orders in for the final design and then we can get them here and ship them for you. So while there's not a link yet it will be near the top of the description when that's available. Okay, sponsory stuff done, let's carry on looking at these 3D printed parts and comparing them to the changes that I make. Ooh. Before we do that, I'm going to have a little drink because I am thirsty. I've just noticed there's like a separate bag, of course. So, the Ever Hot End system, Hot End extruder, carriage, system is used on this printer just the same as the v43 was obviously slightly different parts because it's a slightly different arrangement 
I've made little modifications to these in the past and sort of done a similar thing here. It's basically identical from a distance. Oh, sorry, let's get a slightly better camera view. Obviously, this is in the wrong color. <laughs> uh, but, it, yeah, as I say, it's basically to say, oh, mine's not printed super great there. Do I have another one? No, hopefully that's all right. Uh, just little modifications though. Like I made these clips a little bit thicker because I think with ABS these ones would struggle a little bit. They're just little things. Little helpers that hopefully make things a little bit more easier. And yeah, if you want my files, it's on my GitHub, obviously open source, so you don't have to pay anything. You can just download those and try. Or if you just want to check them and look at them and try some of them, you feel free to do what you like. These look like a 0.3 layer height, whereas opposed to a standard 0.2. Purple plastic pulverizer. That's quite a good name. So mine looks like so. Mine's this one. Again, as you can see, the design is basically identical, but I've made some slight changes to like chamfer angles and this area down here that should print a little bit easier. Size of the holes very, very slightly adjusted to be a bit easier to assemble. And mine's printed in a totally different orient. Oh no, print orientation is the same. So this is the side that is side down. Eva is made to all be 0.3 layer height. Interesting. Maybe I should have printed them with 0.3 layer height. I obviously didn't read the instructions very well there, did I? Looking good though. I always used to print everything in 0.3 layer height. Then the Mark III came along, the Prusa Mark III. And their standard profile was 0.2 millimeters. And from then on, I've just printed everything at 0.2. I don't know why. Just reasons, I guess. Here the carriage parts. So one thing I did notice, obviously, one of the big benefits of EVA is it's super universal. It, all the parts are designed to be compatible. And this, this piece especially is like one of the core pieces, universal mounting plate that works, in theory, for everything. Um, but in this particular design, these are not actually used. So, like, it's obviously, it's fine that they are there, but I thought, why not take them out and make it a little bit, maybe more rigid? It's probably, it's gonna make very little difference, but. I just removed the extra holes that are not used for this design. Because I've seen on this one, the belts are just in the back. You don't have the four kind of belts attached to the whole thing like you do on the Core XY. Obviously this plate won't work with all the other, um, all the other printed designs, which obviously it's downside. But if you're just printing for the B-Minion, you could print the modified purple one if you wanted to. I didn't really make many ever, uh, modifications to the EVA system, it was more to the other parts, we'll cover those now. Wait for the new version, every two is going to be obsolete as <laughs> But I've just printed these parts. When is Ever 3 going to arrive, Pavel? Because I'm literally starting now. Well, yeah, right now.
Soon, of course it's soon. It's always soon, isn't it? That's cheating. <laughs> so we've got the Z motor mount. What modifications did I make to this? Ooh, got hair in my mouth. Have I forgotten to print this part? I think I might have forgotten to print one of these. Yeah, I should probably get on that. <laughs> I've not printed one. I've not printed one. So that's a thing. I've not printed one of these yet. They feel quite dense though. It feels like there's a good amount of plastic in there. This part changed a little bit. So this top part that fits this uh, Z top, it's called, it doesn't really have any mechanical purpose. And there was a part of me that was like, I don't want to use all this plastic for something that's not mechanical. So I made it like a slightly dinkier one. It's a little bit thinner. It's a little bit shorter. So it uses a bit less plastic, prints a little bit faster and does pretty much the same thing. Still has the, the Rat Rig logo on the back, so still looking pretty stylish. It's just a little bit shorter. Um, and then one of the main changes I added is this bit here, which you can't see. I still have this hair in my mouth. If annoy it. Oh, no, that's it. So as you might expect, I've designed some jigs to help with the assembly. And one of the parts was making sure that the, the linear rail for the Z-axis is at the right position. And so I've just placed these in here so you can use this actual part as a jig for placing that Z linear rail and that will get it at just the right position. And then obviously when you place that on top, your quid's in, easy peasy. So it just kind of integrates an assembly jig into the final design part to try and reduce the number of parts that you print and then only use once. So that's a little change. Uh, I've done a similar sort of thing on this part. So this is the Y idler part. Uh, it's my one and the original design. So I've added this bit here, which is the jig, which holds it in place, stops the linear, uh, the guide sliding off the end of the linear rail and can be used as an assembly jig too. In fact, I think I printed a separate jig anyway. And then I also took off this side and mine is printed a different orientation. So mine's printed this orientation and this is printed this orientation. And I took off this side just because it seemed kind of confusing because there's already two screws here and there's two screws here. I was like, I don't feel these two screws are gonna add as much. So I took that side off and I think this should still be absolutely fine and it gives you two spare screws. <laughs> I might be wrong, we'll find out. Hopefully I'm not. Again, it's probably not gonna make any performance difference, but hopefully two less screws. Yeah, slightly easier. And this is probably the part I made the biggest changes to. So you can actually see on the part itself, uh, you get some issues with printing this part here because this part is printed in this orientation, this side down, which is not only not particularly ideal for the strength of this thin part of the I mean, it's not particularly thin, it's still like four mil thick, but in order to retain that strength, you really want to print this part either this way down or this way down. Uh, this way down, you're not really going to manage because you've got the motor that's got to sit in that space and it's a big square box. So really this part wanted to be printed this way is my opinion. So I've modified it to be printable in that orientation. It doesn't look maybe quite as good, I'll give you that, but this is what my one looks like. Apparently I forgot to put the Rat Rig logo on it, so sorry about that. So I've, I've added some more material up here instead of this one where it's kind of cut away. It should still fit in terms of having the available space for the motion of the bed. But it just means it can be printed on that face without any problems. So it should provide a nice robust mount. And that is what that looks like. I've 
I might, for some reason, I've got some parts that are not super great. Oh yes, I was having some trouble with the Voron. That's why these parts are not as good as they wanted to be. But, I mean, they'll be absolutely fine, but they just don't look perfect. That's that part. Maybe the other part that I made significant change to was this one. I mean, you can see exactly why I made the change on the printed part. So this one here, this prints this way up and it secures to the extrusion here and mounts two feet underneath. And that's like the feet at the side of the printer. And as you can see in this hole, you get this kind of not super great kind of overhang thing here where you've got this very deep pocket. It doesn't print superbly well, so I've just modified it slightly. So it's cut out a little bit and then you have a flat top. Prints a little bit easier, comes out a little bit tidier. I think it looks pretty good in the end. Don't think you're going to notice much difference. Looks a little bit different. And I think I've done this the opposite way up to what I wanted it. Because that's going to end up that way up. I should have done it this way so that feature was on the other side. But never mind. It's a little thing. A slight little change. Because I think you can see this has been difficult with PETG. I think it would have been even worse with ABS. So. And again, obviously, just things like chamfers and stuff I've tried to improve, so they're a little bit less steep. Um, this and this, this part in particular was actually very difficult with ABS. These um, chamfers are all at 45 degrees, and these pointed corners, they were, they get a little bit squishy and mushy in ABS. So this is the modified design. As you can see, it's basically identical. All the important faces on this side are in exactly the same place. There's literally no change to what's functional, but these chamfers are very slightly modified. So if you look at it from this angle, you can probably see a bit better. The slope is very different. This one, you, uh, this one you can see is kind of 45 degrees down here. Whereas well, this one is just, it shoots straight up. It's more like 60 or 70. So you don't have the problems. I mean, I still had a little bit of problem here. One corner was still not ideal, but the rest of them come out much better. It was very mushy, the first print. And this one, I did a similar thing with taking off one of the corners because it's this part, again, I think was, uh, in terms of strength, it didn't really do that much. So I took off one of these sides. It makes it a little bit easier to print. You can have a, a slightly different orientation or did I go with the same orientation in the end? No, I went with a slightly different orientation. So this one is printed like this, which makes it a little bit weak around this joint, which is not too much of a worry. And then my one is printed like so. So again, should have exactly the same function, basically no change, but very tiny little modification just to make it a little bit easier for those printing in ABS. And that's pretty much it, I think, for major modifications. There's a few other little bits. You'll see if you've printed the parts before, you'll notice other little changes, but that's, that's the bulk. Yeah, the end cap is purely visual. I mean, it also, it mounts the... Uh, the cable wiring ducting thing as well, isn't it? Which, strength-wise, is pretty minimal, but it does have a job. Uh, so the other thing I guess we should look at is the jigs that I've got for assembly. Again, assembly jigs, uh, there's open source, so, Again, GitHub page, everything is there under my rat, I think I call the, the uh, like rat rig V minion modifications something on my GitHub page, linked in the, thing, in the description. Should be easy peasy to find. 
I printed mine in silver PLA. I do recommend PLA for jigs because it's more dimensionally stable. So you, it's easy to print more dimensionally accurate parts in PLA, especially as they shrink less than things like ABS or PETG. So for doing jigs, I do recommend using PLA. It doesn't have to be shiny, glittery PLA like this one. But PLA is my recommendation. Oh, I've got this additional piece of another jig. So, which is these four? So, this set. This set is for one of the linear rails. So, the linear rail on the Y, uh, which axis is it? The Y axis sits, for example, on this length here. Let's bring this out. So imagine the linear rail is sitting on this face here. These jigs sit, one goes here, and you see that just snugly touches, and the other one goes on the end. So this one, the one at the end, provides two functions. It's an end stop, so as you put that there and you push a rail into it, it sets it exactly five millimeters from the end of the rail, which is what it says it to do in the instructions. And then there's this one here, which just aligns it kind of left to right to make sure it's parallel with the rail. So that's for Y axis. These ones are very similar job, but for the Z axis linear rail, obviously in that orientation, the assembly goes this way around. So same kind of job, it's just a little bit wider. And then you've got these ones. These ones hold into this slot like this and help you align the lead screw. So two of those, one high up, one low down, that'll help you put the lead screw in position. You made those jigs yourself. There's a great set of user-made ones on the Discord. Ah, well now we have another set. And I also made this little end stop piece. This is not a jig, but on the Z linear rail, the there didn't seem to be anything to really stop. I mean, obviously there's lots of other physical parts, um, but there's nothing to directly stop the linear rail coming off the carriage. So I just made this little end stop piece, which will screw on and sit at the base of the rail. And then you can't accidentally slide the linear rail off the end. So, that is that. That's the jigs. Not too much there. As I said, all of the jigs and extra like little part modifications, if you do want them, GitHub link. All free, no paying, you just try them. Go for it. Question is, what do we do now? I've just realised I've not checked on Twitch the entire stream. So apologies to anyone on Twitch who's been watching and leaving comments and I've not seen them. That is entirely my fault. Hopefully not missed anything. Um, so the plan is not to start assembly today because I want to kind of segment it appropriately, if that makes sense. So this entire stream is just towards any preparations that we want to do before we start the main assembly. So we could do some things. Let's have a look through the instructions and see if there's stuff that we want to prepare before getting on with the main assembly. So from, well, this is the project page, is it? Uh, yeah, 
This is the project page. And then at the instruction manual page. Yeah, so you've got preparations and then the eight steps to follow it. Preparation of printed parts. So this is one of the modifications I make on my parts so you don't have to do this step. The rat rig ones have this kind of filled in space, which makes it easier to print the hole after that space. But mine has a little like layer manipulation, so you don't have to worry about that. Maybe I can show you all the parts that I have modified. Maybe this would be a good one because it's a large hole. It's also quite a deep hole though. You can't really see, can you? I do know I need a shallower hole that's you can kind of see on these because they're cut away. Do, 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 do. On these holes down here, this one and this one. I do this little layer manipulation so it kind of, it does the lines in one direction, but avoids the hole and then the other direction and then just carries on as normal. So no extra like hole preparation. Don't need to worry too much about that. Installing hex nuts, that could be something to get done sooner rather than later. Preparing the parts for the brackets, there's quite a lot to do here. So we could get on with that. Oh, this is just an instruction rather than uh, that's more of a how to do it than do it now. Whereas this is something that we can do now. And will probably save us a good bit of time once we start the main assembly. So we can get started with that, I think. Yes, it, the, the quantity of brackets is significantly reduced. Uh, let's organise myself. I need to get all these electrical parts back in this box. This is going to be a bit of a game of Tetris. I'm not sure this is going to go back in quite the way it was. Once you unpack this box, Shall never go back together the way it was. Probably not going to need most of these things until towards the end of the build. The electronics generally comes right towards the end. Yeah, this is not going to take long to do this. This is like three compared to the back. The big old three had like what? Three, six, nine, twelve, like twenty-five, six, eight brackets, something like that. Very low part count in comparison. Why does my camera angle look really odd? Let's not worry about that. So some angled brackets going to be useful. I think we're going to need some nuts, nuts, spares, some screws, big bag screws, big bag nuts. So we've got two corner plates. T-shaped plate, oh, we don't need this one then. And we don't need this one. 21 M6 by 12s, 
M6 by 12s. Six M6 washers. Ooh, the washers, exciting. Oh, I can't find it. Washer, simple M6 black. Oh, if you do go on, don't forget to use my link in the description, my uh, voucher codes. One, two, three, four, five, six washers. Can't put these bits back in the bag now. Think that one in the bag. Uh, what else do we need? 21, 30, 30 knots. That's these. Okay, cool. Let's have a go at starting this. Probably don't need all of this bag, but. E greasy screws. E me no like greasy screws. Well, black things do look good. Rising bladed screws are much nicer to handle. You don't need to wear gloves, by the way. It's not a. It's not a thing. <laughs> but I don't like the the oil on these tends to make my hands a little bit itchy. So, out come the gloves. <laughs> and then we just start loading in screws. One, two, three, four, five. Put that on there. Be interesting to see if we have any slightly dud nuts. You do quite often in a large set of these nuts get one that's like doesn't have a thread in or something. So there are some spares, just in case. But fingers crossed, we'll be fine without those. Oh, have we found one already? Nope. We got one. <laughs> Just the one. Now it's probably a good time to buy one, guys, if you do want one. <laughs> By all accounts and like previous experience with VCore 3. Once the machine gets very, very popular, it tends to just go out of stock and then be long wait times. So it's in stock now. <laughs> Might be worth getting one while it's still in stock. Just as well, I have this really flat granite surface. <laughs> no, it's obviously not for this part of the assembly. So that's those two. I'm pretty sure I've done that right. Same screws in every one. Yeah. Same job again. M6 by 12 screws and drop in nuts. One, two, three, four, five. Obviously, it, does, it doesn't matter which side you do this from because it's symmetrical. As long as they're all from the same side, obviously.
Where is the cow? <laughs> the cow's in the bath listening to... What was it? The Little Mermaid. <laughs> <laughs> At least that's the story that Pavel's telling. Oh, is the code not active? I was hoping it would be active. That's annoying. Well, maybe wait off till Monday then. <laughs> Hopefully we can get it activated as soon as possible. The code is definitely right. So now we can move on to these angle brackets. Of these. So we've got some washers this time. This was my problem with these before, they didn't have washers. So good to see the appearance of washers. Noise, 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 noise. Oops, so there's it. Two of those, one more. Well, that was much quicker than <laughs> doing that on the v 3. That's all the preparation steps done. Now we're ready to kick off the frame assembly next time. Boom. Right, cool. Well, that's going to be it for today then. We've got everything out, sorted everything, ready to go, prepared. I do need to make sure I have all the printed parts because I've obviously noticed I'm missing one. I don't know how I've managed to print all of these parts and miss one of the most important pieces, which is somewhat silly. But you know, these things happen. Completely first for minute in two hours. Watched it for some live stream, received the package at the day of the stream. <gasps> two hours? I've got like six streams. I thought this was going to take a little while. 
We'll do a, like a speed thing, speed boat at the end of doing this because I think that's going to be quite fun. <laughs> but yeah, that's going to be it for me today. Thank you everyone for joining. Don't forget to use the voucher codes and well, if it's slightly in the future and my PCB mod is available, then you can get that at the link in the description below too. Thank you very much to the sponsor, which is Rat Rogue, for providing the printer. And I will see you all in the next one. We don't have... Uh, I don't have a, like a specific set schedule for the rest of these build streams yet. Obviously now I've got everything out of the box, we're gonna have some proper or like pre-planned sponsor segments next time. So that'll be a little bit more smooth. And things will be nice and ready to go. Yeah, so I'll see you all in the next one. Obviously, subscribe and like and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. See you all pretty soon.